everyone, my name is Nick Larico, but you can call me Demi, and welcome back to another Art Talk video. Today we're going to be talking about the Grand Premier Monster Energy de Catalonia 2023 from the MotoGP and the, how did they call it? Um, F1 Pirelli, uh, Pirelli, uh, Formula 1 Pirelli Grand Premio d'Italia 2023. Um, we're going to start off with the MotoGP sprint race because that was on Saturday and basically going to go into like a chronological order. But we're going to go a bit different during um, the F1 races and MotoGP races. Um, we're going to do the F1 race first because we watched that first and then going to go over to MotoGP feature race. So yeah, uh, in the sprint race there was only one retirement uh, being Paul Espargaro, he crashed out. Uh, we didn't see the crash, um, but yeah, that was he was the only one not classified. Um, yeah, and it wasn't a good race for the Jamar riders. Uh, for the Hondas, Mark Marquez was best in eleventh, but no points for that. And basically, the other the other three were like last. Then again. Leguona, uh, yeah, he, he's preserved, he's just like um, replacing Alex Rins still. Um, Takeki Nakagami, he should actually be up there, way up there. And Juan Mir, well, he made a mistake going to Repsol Honda, let's just say that. Also for KTM, because Jack Miller, he just got bounced back. Um, yeah. For Ducati, however, well, we can just say that he had a good race with like one podium, a P5, P7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, uh, and that's it. <laughs> Both the Fernandeses had a good race with Adrian or Augusto Fernandez in 17th and Raul Fernandez in 14th. Um, yeah, Miguel Oliveira in 6th, Bradman the 4th, and then the main factory, Aprilias, 1 and 3, with Alej Spargo winning the main race, uh, well, the main race, he did, yeah, but also the sprint race, and then, um, Vinales in 3rd, so yeah, that, that was a pretty good race, to say the least. Um, yeah, I, I really like that race, not Moto 2, Moto 3, we're going to start with Moto 3. Um, the retirements are Fabio Farioli and David Munoz. And we're going to have to keep in mind, uh, David Munoz did not crash on his own. Uh, he basically got kicked, uh, or not by Dennis Onchu in the last corner and you know our obsession in my family with slippers we legit were like his brother his twin brother or one of his parents is probably gonna be there with a pair of slippers just ready like yeah you're gonna get beaten today um uh, he ended up getting uh like a uh like a punch well, not like not a punch, more like a, a bit uh, a bit of a slap, not hard, uh, from his team onto his helmet. Um, because he got a penalty from that incident, which is equivalent to two uh, two two long lap penalties, aka a double long lap penalty, and that is six seconds. So he went from third to twelfth. Um, let's go to the woman, uh, in, um, in Moto3, Anna Carrasco, 27th, but then again, she was really close to 26th, only like one tow, one, well, one tenth of a second, one tenth, 
this be 0 0.102 to be precise. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, Daniel Hogado had a crash, but he was able to pick his bike back up. Um, I guess you're wondering, Demi, you're not mentioning Colin Vaya. Little boy broke his foot in a crash during qualifying. He will not be racing for a little bit. Yeah. And like he, he was so, doing so well, like he was third on Friday overall, and then coming into Saturday morning, he was first in practice. So like, give that guy like a better bike, and he, he will he will do magic. He'll do magic. But then again, he is on quite a good bike, a Husk Farmer. It is quite a good bike. I have to admit. Um, podium. Um, yeah, let's go to the podium here. So in third, we have a rookie. Um, it's a teammate of Dennis Lemchu. And it's Rueda. Um, he, he's young. He's, he's very young, uh, I think. And this is his first ever podium, and like he, so, he was so happy. He was so happy, and you know, rookies deserve to get a podium. Like if this is a prize podium, always. But like if they're just like doing good in a good car, but always not on the podium, then they do deserve a podium. Second, Hjalmar Masia, and first, David Alonso. The commentators basically said, which I found very funny, um, David Alonso, he's from Colombia, but his mother is Spanish, so, but like, his mother is uh, from Colombia. Um, I don't want the par his parents is from Colombia, but David Alonso is as Spanish as Paella. That's basically what they said. <laughs> I was crackling about that. That was really good. Um, Sasaki ended up in P4, just missed out on the podium. Um, when will we get to see Colin Fire back? I don't know. But, you know, after his performances in, uh, in Assen, uh, Silverstone, and uh, definitely the Red Bull Ring, you know, he, he might be just like a young boy but I think we will see him back in a couple of races time um, now we're gonna go to motor 2 and yeah retirements oh, not finished first lap that, that's new I just seen it we basically here have Sura he did not finish one lap Senna Aegis crashed out, but Ben Schneider had technical issues, so he retired. And Philip Salach. So yeah, disappointed for Ben Schneider, but at least he did not crash. Like my dad has said, ever since he got a new bike after Sil uh, in Silverstone, it's just gone downhill for him. Just give him back the 2022 bike, he was so good in there. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, guess who's back? Barry Baltis from um. You guys might remember from the last No GP uh, after talk I did. He broke his foot, but he's back. So yeah. The Belgium driver who doesn't speak a word Dutch. Yay. <laughs> he's not born in in like the Flemish part. Which is like northern Belgium. I think he's more like the southern Belgium, so like near the French part, or maybe eastern near like Germany. I don't know. Like either way, apart where they don't speak Dutch. Um, Barry Bates started off good with the P12, and Zonta he was in the points for a good while, but then he dropped back to 18th. One day, one day he's gonna get that 
that one point or maybe even two who knows um Celestino Vietti after his fantastic victory um I can't remember when it was was it Silverstone or Red Bull Ring no it was the Red Bull Ring because um um Acosta he uh, he put on some lederhose yeah, after his victory last race, he is B10. Speaking of Pedro Acosta, the shark of Mazaron. P6, he had a moment and he basically lost it. Um, Sergio Garcia, let's talk about him. I did not know that he now has probably the best result so far, which is B4. That's insane. Um... Manuel Gonzalez, uh, he got mixed into the fight, which was good for him, P5. Uh, Albert Arenas got a podium. I think it is, was also his first ever podium in Moto2. Second, Aaron Connect. I don't think that man can ever get first. Because normally it would be like, he's first for a very long time. But oh no, he's in the gravel. And he crashes out of the race and cannot continue. That's normally how it goes with Aaron Kinnett. But this time, yeah, he just got overtaken by Britain on a gas gas ass spa. Which is basically the second gas gas victory that day. From Jake Dixon, yeah. And Fabio Quattraro, he came and celebrated for, uh, with him, congratulated him, because... Uh, Fabi Quattararo and Jake Dixon are good friends. So yeah. Yeah, that's basically the, the result that. <laughs> I'm going to already put it to MotoGP. But then we're going to go to Formula 1 Pirelli, uh, Pirelli Gran Premio d'Italia 2023. First of all, retirements. Well, we had one did not start. And that was Yuki Tsunoda. I've just seen something. Oh yeah, right. Okay. Um, so Yuki Tsunoda, he did not start. Um, his engine basically overheated during the formation lap, which gave us a delay until, um, I believe, 14 hour 20 it's like uh yeah like a long time um and then Esteban Ocon he just had technical issues I think uh at the bottom here I've just read Russell and Piastro received five second time penalties for causing a collision Hamilton and Sargent received five second time penalties for causing a collision so uh, Russell received one with uh, had one with Ocon, Piastri I don't know. Um, he did have a collision with Hamilton, but Hamilton got a penalty for that. Sergeant got a penalty with um, uh, Sergeant got a penalty because he made contact with Bottas, but Bottas still got the upper hand. I think Piastri might have gone a penalty for hitting Norris. I don't know. Or maybe like near the end. Um, I really don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll go over that later. Um, yeah, like I said, Hamilton had a time penalty for collision with, uh, with Piastri. Hamilton basically turned in. Yeah, that's not good. Um, still no... Um, yeah, it's still no Danny Ricciardo, but Liam Lawson stepped in. 11th. He was like six seconds behind a points finish. You know how crazy that is? Yeah. Uh, another quiet race for the uh, Aston Martins stroll. In, um, in 16th, man should really get kicked out. I 
Aston Martin. And Fernando Alonso in ninth. Um, Albon, seventh. Ah, did good. He had a very enjoyable battle. Enjoyable battle with Norris. Um, I don't think Norris enjoyed it that much, but Albon did. It was basically Albon um, wants to you uh, wants to um, have all the profit from the top speed, so he makes sure that his car is completely straight before he goes onto the gas. And Norris does not like that very much, <laughs> so yeah. Norris ended up getting four points in eighth, which is quite iconic because his race number is number four. Um, remember how I was not confident about the mon about Max Verstappen getting number ten. I was wrong, <laughs> but then again, it could have been different. Like it, it could have been me saying like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna win," and then he would not win. So yeah, Perez put up a strong race once again in second um signs had pole position and he made it a race to remember for the tifosi uh he basically led quite a few laps and then um he got overtaken by by max um but yeah he still finished onto the podium in third the clerk in fourth and it was just one crazy race. It, it, it really started with insanity, you know. Yeah. 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 Um, Sergeant still no points yet, but it will come. They did say something about it being like this many years since the last American F1 driver scored points, but I can't remember how many years again, how many years it is. I do know it was either it was like an Andretti or something. Um, Gasly quiet race, Joe quiet race, um, Hulkenberg and Magnussen also quiet race. Uh, besides the fact that Hulkenberg had issues with the sinking of his gears. Like, they weren't in sync. That's what Max Verstappen used to have all the time. So yeah, that is that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Next race for, for Formula 1 is Singapore, my favourite. Um, at the Marina Bay Street Circuit on 15th till 17th September and I'm very excited um, yeah it, it's it's one of my favorite street circuits what can you do about it I don't really have a favorite normal normal circuit I think like either Zandvoort with the bankings or maybe Spa because it's iconic but like not not actually Monza. It's either either Spa or Zandvoort that's my favourites because you know it's iconic. I actually have a book which is like the whole history of Zandvoort. Um, my dad actually won it for me right here. Yeah, it's this book. Um, yeah, he he basically won that book for me, and I've read it twice and it's really good. I really love that book. So yeah, it yeah it basically tells the entirety of the history, um, and the guy basically wrote it because everyone was going to return to the Netherlands once again. But yeah, that was F one. Now we're going to go back to Much GP because we actually watched that afterwards. Um, let me tell you. The start was already hectic. Um, there was a crash going into turn one. Spectacular. Always. It's always one guy who causes it. Last year it was Takaki Nakigami. He didn't receive a penalty for it. His helmet got damaged. Uh, because he ended up on 
uh, on uh, Benaya's uh, front tire. But he was completely fine himself, besides a few injuries. Uh, but this time there was another incident at the start involving Enea Bastianini, Marco Vesecchi, Fabio Di Giantonio, and Alex Marquez. And then there was another incident which no one really started. Well, like, I don't think anyone really started it. But it involved Francesco Bonaia and Brad Binder, but also one of the uh, Prima Pramac drivers because he been bumped into him. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys what happened there. I can show it because I know the driver who had the massive incident he is okay. So yeah it was it was really scary. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to now talk about uh, the restart. Because there was a restart. It was red flags. Because, you know, there was a driver in the middle of the track. He couldn't move. He was in so much pain. You will see how that happens in the clip that I found on Instagram. But yeah. Uh, at the restart, Benoian Bas Bas uh, Enea Bastianini did not appear at the start. So no Ducati team. Not classified were Paul Spargo, he had technical issues, um, Brad Binder, just, it, 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 his bike was gone, and Raul Fernandez. Now the good thing about MotoGP is they have second bikes. So as soon, um, from the moment that the team was like, the team saw like this crashes, they were like instantly getting those bikes ready for the restart. Which meant that... Bezecchi, Di Antonio, and Alex Marquez were able to join the restart, which was good. Um, for once, Juan Mir stayed on the bike. This is the second race in the road where Mark Marquez stayed on the bike. Yeah. Um, Quattrero actually had a good start for once. He ended up P7. I'm so happy for the man. For once. Uh, Jack Miller once again got bounced back. Um, now about those guys who had that crash. Vizeki, uh he had a bit of a squabble with uh, his teammate. Uh, and ended up in 12th. Gigi Antonio was 10th. And Alex Marquez in 6th. Uh, Miguel Oliveira did did well. All all of the Aprilias this time this race besides um, uh, Raul Fernandez he basically had technical issues. Um, all of them did fine. Or well, actually, Raul Fernandez did well until he had those issues. So I can say they all did well. <laughs> they all they all had a good race, um, especially. The uh, the Aprilia race, the Aprilia racing, yeah, the, the factory team. <laughs> they scored a one-two, with Alessio Spargaro in first and Maverick Vinales in second, and Jorge Mate rounding out the podium in third, with Zarco in fourth. Um, Vinales was actually leading the race for the majority of the time, and it looked like he was going to take home. Um, he was going to take um, his first ever victory with Aprilia. And if he did, he uh, would have been the f he would have been the first driver to win on three different bikes. He won on Suzuki, he won on Yamaha, and he was going to win on Aprilia. So yeah. Anyways. The next race, I'm already going to tell you guys. Um, the next race has not been has not happened yet. Yay! Uh, calendar. Hey, you gotta scroll down. It's a 
September. The next race is actually next weekend. And that is Grand Premier, uh, Grand Premio Red Bull di San Marino e della Riviera di Rimini. At Misano Wood Circuit, Marco Simoncelli. Misano is a good circuit. I quite like it. And after that, they're going to go to India. Yeah. India. New on the calendar. Yeah. And then, like, a lot of nostalgic tracks, like Qatar and Malaysia, Thailand. Thailand's not really that nostalgic. Phillip Islands. Uh, Montegi. AKA Twin Ring. But yeah, now on to the clip from where it all happens. There will be no sounds. I'm just saying, there's no sounds. So basically, this is already the first part. It's so like, here you can see those drivers. There's Bestia, that's his nickname. One of the Grazinis, another Grazini. Oh, Zarka was involved in that too. Zarka was involved. How could I forget? Uh, Sago took a big hit, and then his Aeneas uh, Tiani, the Deki. So yeah, that was that. And then, well, this is just a start. I think this is just turn one. Someone said, "Surprise, Oliveira wasn't in the middle." Okay, Ducati bowling. Okay. Let's call this Ducati bowling, because no way it's <laughs> it actually makes sense because it's all Ducatis. <laughs> uh, it's like all the four different kinds of Ducatis that crashed. I think this is just the, that crash. The turn one. Why did they not show the crash? from Mr. M Mr. Uh, Mr. Peko because I want to see that I want, wait are we gonna go to there? no we're not what a rip off um, yeah I think we might no we're not we are not gonna see that Um, but yeah, this is basically what happens. He ended up in the hospital. No broken bones. I think it might be this too. No, not that one. You know, I'm gonna look it up on YouTube. Just like um, shorts or something. And I have searched it. Uh, yeah. Down at the first oh, corner. No, oh, no, Bang no. has gone down. And Bang Yai lost the rear, didn't he? He's so coming out of turn two. Bender's going to go down here. Oh. Bang Yai launches it. Yeah, he had a high side. It's Bender that yeah. runs on someone. Pekka Bang Yai is OK after that one. Okay, so bend. conscious as you can see. So as you can see then, Pekka Bang Yai is receiving um, treatment. He's now going to be put in the ambulance. Like, a penalty like, for that, yeah. absolutely yeah. no question. So More than a big slap on the wrist there. As champion. the crowd are on their feet. But then I was like, Center. He's going to the back scooter. Back. Uh, so no there will be a quick That's start, nice. and yes. you know, meaning it's none of us friend. allowed on the grid. Down at the first oh, corner. No, oh, no, no, no. As I was when I saw this happen. Normally, when you see during a race someone go over someone's legs or like against someone's back, it's like over, it's done. Um, but the safety nowadays is that good that we can actually say that they can survive that there is a possibility that they will not lose their lives and francesco Bonaya just showed us um how that looks you know he came he got away with the scare and yeah that's it also um Enea bastinini is going to miss the next three races 
Uh, don't know why. Partially because of his injury, partially maybe because he got a penalty. But like, yeah. Anyways, I've gone way, no way over time now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please, leave love buds in the comments for Francesco Bonaia. Because he's a warrior amongst those drivers. He he's gone through quite a lot. He got his first podium in Misano with a, a not completely healed leg. Yeah. Francesco Bonaia is a warrior. Yeah. Leave a love hearts, love hearts in the chat in the comments for him. Okay. Anyways. That's it from me for now. Like the video while you're at it and subscribe if you're new. And, that, and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye!